Um, welcome everyone to the 17th international annual international conference of ICABE. Um, as you know, William Patterson University is the co-host institution and the University of West Attica is the other co-host institution. And we have, of course, the co-host Professor Stamatopoulos here, the co-host of the conference, and Theodoro Stamatopoulos. Nice to see you, Theodoro, today. And um, Good morning. As Hello. I mentioned, let's start. Professor Thalassinos will join us very soon. Um, I would like you to talk about your journal and talk about what you think it will make your journal a better journal and your experiences with uh, submissions of works and interaction with authors and um, possible, you know, authors and uh, the refereeing process. I will leave it open in a sense so that you can share some highlights. We have a lot of editors. We have, according to the schedule, we have something like 15 editors. I don't think every single one is here, but we have a lot of editors here. And perhaps the first step is to introduce yourself briefly and to mention your journal and the salient features of the journal that you are editing. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Jan, we are a little bit late because we extend the previous session a little bit. Okay, so okay. we have m more people coming. So give yeah. three, four minutes to connect. Okay. Yeah, I took over that because uh, a few people have to go. So I took oh, over. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. No problem. No problem. We start. We start immediately. Okay, go on. Go, go yeah. on. Okay. You go ahead now, Lefteri, but I already asked them to introduce their journals briefly and to talk about the salient features of the journals. Very well, yes. Who wants to go first? Who has to go all first? Should start first. Two minutes, yes, go ahead. Mr. Gosh, go ahead. Yes. Could not hear you. You are muted. Microphone, Tanasis. Yes, we hear you. So go ahead, I said. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, yes, so I, I was suggesting that go down the list. <laughs> Of, of, of the panel and uh, people can uh, basically introduce themselves briefly. Or or we can start from the top left side and go oh, around. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. So, uh, Professor Dimitris Gunopoulos, will you please of present course, yourself? Uh, uh, yeah, your good door. morning, good, yeah, good uh, afternoon, good evening, uh, based on where you are located in this world. Uh, to everyone, uh, I'm Dimitris Gunopoulos, I'm a professor of uh, accounting and finance. Uh, uh, in the University of uh, Bath in the United Kingdom. It is an honor to be with this distinguished uh, uh, panel of people here. Let me introduce my journal. I am uh, associate editor of the Journal of Accounting in Emerging Economies. So uh, the journal mainly is focusing on receiving articles uh, on accountancy, on corporate governance, on financial reporting, on auditing, on management accounting from emerging countries. So we try to promote research in the journal from emerging countries. And I am happy to say that the number of submissions uh, has increased dramatically over the late years because uh, a lot of emerging countries have started doing research and uh, their academics from those countries uh, have improved their skills and qualities. Uh, so uh, in order not to take uh, more of your uh, time because it's valuable. Uh, lately, we have published uh, also articles about natural resource governance. Uh, so I, I link this with the uh, climate change, which is a hot issue in our days. Uh, uh, on corporate social responsibility as well, how accounting links with corporate social responsibility. Uh, on budgeting, budgeting control. Uh, and of course, we welcome uh, uh, in our journal articles uh, from anyone 
around this world uh, who is uh, uh, exploring uh, uh, the emerging countries. Uh, not the developed countries, but mainly we would like to see work uh, and to promote work from emerging countries. This is all by me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, A pleasure. Going, going to Mr. Luis Rivera. Luis Rivera. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Dipik Ghosh. Your microphone. Your microphone. We cannot hear you. Uh, go on and uh, and we come back. Uh, Mr. Stengos, welcome, Thanasis. Okay, go ahead. Unmute. Unmute your microphone. Unmute your microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay good. good. Good, go ahead. All right, so thank you very much. Um, I'm Thanasis Stengos from the University of Guelph in Canada. Um, I've been involved with the General of Applied Econometrics and some other journals as well, empirical economics, economics letters, and uh, uh, chief editor of uh, editor in chief of the Journal of Risk and Financial Management. Um, so these are journals that are mainly applied, uh, use empirical methods to essentially cover a number of uh, uh, different uh, areas in economics and finance, uh, and uh, particularly economics. Um, the General of Applied Econometrics is also more involved in the methodology part of uh, the application. Uh, the other journals are much interested equally on the application and less on the method. Um, uh, the General of Risk and Financial Management is uh, a general that is open access. Um, now there are a lot of open access journals around. Some of them are predatory journals that basically publish anything that one sends them. Uh, the Journal of Risk and Financial Management started as a statistics journal in the UK. And, you know, basically uh, the attempt has been through the chief editor that was before, who unfortunately passed away, Michael McClear, to make it much more of a central piece uh, journal with uh, emphasis in methodology and application. Um, so, in all these journals, uh, anything that is uh, worth uh, submitting has to do with uh, good methodology and a good application in most areas of economics and finance. So this is basically what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Thanasis. Uh, going next to Mirella Cristea. Yes. I have a short presentation, a PowerPoint uh, presentation, just to make a visual uh, impression about the, about the journal. Uh, journal of Risk and Financial Management. Uh, I am a guest editor uh, next to Professor Talasinos here. I am honored. And uh, Graziela Georgiana Noja also, which is here from uh, West University of Timisoara. I, I am from University of Craiova, Romania. And uh, this journal is um, uh, MDPI special issue. We are editors on a uh, special issue on risk management and uh, financial uh, derivatives. Um, a few words about the journal and then about the special issue risk management and financial derivatives. So there are a lot of benefits of uh, publishing in this uh, journal and the uh, special issue especially. Uh, the journal is uh, indexed uh, within, within uh, Web of Science, uh, ESCI and other many databases. Uh, is an international peer-reviewed open access monthly journal published by MDPI. Uh, is uh, with open access for uh, readers, free for readers, but uh, there is also an uh, article processing, uh, there is article processing charges paid even by authors or by um, their institutions. The um, fee is uh, 1,200 uh, Swiss francs. Um, the journal is with high uh, visibility. Uh, 
uh, also with the rapid publication, you know, MDP, MDPI uh, journals, uh, and also as reviewers, so there is a recognition which uh, consists in uh, vouchers, uh, which are uh, entitled to a discount on uh, uh, charges. Uh, as regards uh, our uh, special issue, uh, this uh, special issue belongs to section financial markets of the journal. Um, and uh, we uh, defined uh, this special uh, issue with Professor Dalasinos and uh, Graziella, uh, considering that uh, the risk uh, exposures of the companies, which reached um, extremely high levels, especially on the nowadays uh, COVID-19 uh, outbreak. And uh, derivative products are um, effective uh, instruments that, that uh, companies can use to mitigate financial risk and um, that are uh, no longer nationwide but global and widely uh, complicated. Uh, here we have... Uh, oh, sorry. We have uh, some uh, keywords uh, which... Metrics, uh, risk management and analysis, quantitative finance, foreign value and performance, derivative products, aging, financial markets, financial distress, market volatility, foreign exchange market applied uh, econometrics. Um, more information uh, there are on the website of the journal. And uh, at the moment, there are only four uh, papers uh, published on the journal. And the, the deadline of the journal is uh, 20, 20 March uh, next, uh, next year. I think uh, for, especially for uh, PhD students or postdoctoral students, but not only for them, this journal is uh, very, um, very interesting to, to publish. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention and we are really looking forward to receiving uh, your contributions to this journal and to our uh, special uh, spe special issues. Thank you, thank you, Mirella. Thank you very much. Will you try, will you try Professor Goss again? You want to try to talk, to present? If you unmute your microphone? Uh. Unmuting. Can you hear? Okay. Yes, yes, you can speak now. Mirella, take take it out. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. I don't know why, but <clears throat> it is automatically coming as muted and unmuted. I don't know why, but um, <clears throat> the International Journal of Finance is running 33 years now, and I'm happy to tell Professor John Malindertus, uh, Professor uh, Ephraim Clark, Professor Edgar Ortiz, they are all in my editorial board. They are here. And uh, John Malindertus actually co-edited for a few years from William Patterson University. The journal is, as I see it, uh, <coughs> publishes original contributions, theoretical as well as empirical, in the field of corporate finance, investment, portfolio analysis, financial institutions and markets, and international trade. And if it uh, sometimes some economic um, papers as well, um, relevant to international finance in particular, uh, finance is actually a financial economics. It came into being in the academia in 1961, I believe, and Journal of Finance had its debut in 1946. Harry Markovich's Nobel Prize winning work in 1952 came in 1952, March. I asked Harry Markowitz, he's a good friend, and I will mention in my special session at 3 to 4.30, I ask you to come. Uh, I wrote a paper uh, 
uh, where there are 12 other Nobel laureates have written. Um, and the title of the paper is Collaboration on Research, Writing, and Editing. Um, I um, am, uh, personally, I'm a theoretical person, but I do some empirical work with a uh, good grounding on theory. I don't like casual empiricism. And um, so I have to give the grounding uh, of, on theory, and then I will uh, accept. Actually, I don't accept. The, I assign the paper to two editors. I read maybe three or four pages. I figure out who the edit uh, uh, reviewer should be. And um, when I get the reviews, I, in fact, call them first. Then I send the paper. I don't just send the paper. With their consent, I send the papers. And um, if they both agree, then, um, of course, it's the acceptance situation. If uh, they differ, I send to, uh, and it to a third associate editor, third editor, I mean, reviewer, who is a, an associate editor, and give the previous editor's comments as well to them. On the basis of that, we make a decision. And I have been in the profession for a long time. I know 17 Nobel laureates very closely. I get their inputs on research. On my later session, I will discuss something where you will see many of the Nobel laureates, you know, revere their papers have been uh, rejected. I mentioned here at least two. Uh, this uh, uh, Modigliani and Miller, uh, 1958 article was rejected. William Sharp capital asset pricing model was rejected. Harry Markowitz uh, Nobel Prizing work uh, was his dissertation in University of Chicago, and I will mention uh, that um, it is in his book. Uh, I think it is 1995 book. Uh, I will quote from there that Milton Friedman is saying, halfway into the defense of his dissertation, he said, Harry, I read the paper, I read your thesis, there's nothing wrong, but I would not give you PhD in economics because it is not economics. Uh, so, uh, and then, I will make more comments out of the book. I will read there, not now. And then his first supervisor, Jack Marshak, uh, asked him to leave the room as a usual custom in the US for five, 10 minutes. And then he came out and said, congratulations, uh, Dr. Markovich. That's the uh, reality. Milton Friedman is a Nobel laureate, and his judgment was that poor. And I can give a uh, uh, black and souls paper was rejected, option pricing model. And so oh, rejection doesn't mean it's a bad quality paper. There could be spite effect. There would be non-recognition of the field. So I do my honest job as an editor. And um, there you go. I have nothing uh, else to say unless you have a question for me. And I recognize few of these people who are in my editorial board. Uh, in fact, Edgar Ortiz and... Um, Ephraim Clark, they 
brought out the frontiers in economics and finance, I was in a conference in Lille, I believe, uh, in France. I was the keynote speaker there. And um, they always take my help. I take their help. And that's the way it goes on. I leave it for the next editor. Thank you very much. Good morning from the United States. Uh, maybe good afternoon in Athens. Thank you very much, Professor Ghosh. Uh, we go to Professor Ephraim Clark on the top there. Okay. Your, your microphone. This microphone. Yes. Got it? Yes, we got it. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Ephraim Clark from Middlesex University in the UK in London. And um, I'm co-editor along with Edgar Ortiz of Frontiers in Finance and Economics. I've been doing some special uh, editions of um, Annals and Operations Research, but mostly it's Frontiers in Finance and Economics. Basically, that's a, it's a journal we created about 18, 19 years ago. And um, uh, to be honest with you, any good paper that we get in finance or economics, we'll publish it. Because the problem we, that we've got is, is getting a, a good flow of good, high-quality papers since, uh-oh. Can you hear me? Okay, so, because my, my, screen, my screen went dead. So um, the, the, we'll publish, uh, if it's a good paper, the problem we've got is getting a, a we get a lot of submissions, but a lot of the papers are just like not really uh, polished professional papers. So if we get a good paper, most of the papers, the good ones that we get are from international students, you know, of PhD students or a young doctor or doctoral um, young doctors in international finance, mostly sometimes in international economics. And um, the problem that we're having that I'm, that we're having is, is getting good referees to give good referee reports. The, a lot of the reports I'm getting back are not really referee reports. They say, well, it's badly written. Uh, and they don't, and obviously, they've only re read the first page of the, of, the, of the paper. So what I'm trying to do in, with, with, with the journalists is kind of work with, the, with these guys that are trying to get their papers published, work with them and see if they can get a better paper. It's, it's difficult. I'm having a hard time, especially with this COVID thing. This COVID thing almost wiped it, almost completely wiped me out. You know, I couldn't get anybody... To, even the guys that I knew very well, I couldn't get anybody to do any refereeing or anything like that. Now it's coming back, so I think we can get back in the flow. But, you know, Edgar's been uh, doing a lot of uh, with, with people in Mexico, you know, get sending papers in and things like that. So um, I think that, um, that let's say uh, I'll see over the next year or so which which direction the, the paper. I'm getting kind of old myself, you know, so somebody else is going to have to take it over pretty soon. And um, I'm already 30 years old, you know, and so um, I have to get somebody to do it before I'm 31. And um, <laughs> only one guy smiling. <laughs> I mean, come on, I'm joking. I'm 40. <laughs> so anyway, so so this this is where we are. Good so, five, I, good I was kind of looking forward to a discussion, hearing from you guys what you're what you're doing to generate good papers and what you're doing to get the referees. Because I'm having a very difficult time getting people to agree to referee a paper. Or if they say they'll do it, like I say, they send something that says was badly written. They made a mistake in line number two in the first in the introduction. And so they reject the paper. Obviously, they just didn't want to do, do the work. So I'm interested in a discussion we can have. Maybe we can, I can get some ideas on how we can, I can generate good referee reports and better papers. So that's all for me. I'm going to leave the rest up to Edgar. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Clark. We got our friends from Mexico. Uh, Professor Edgar Ortiz. Is correct? Name? Ortiz? Okay, go ahead. Unmute, unmute. I would present it if you like me. I have a short presentation about uh, the journal and uh, let's see if that comes 
طيب مينت اه ايم اوريدي ثانكينج ذا No, this is not it. Oh. Okay, go without without the presentation. <clears throat> to save time. Anyway. Anyway, uh, I uh, like to present the Mexican Journal of Economics and Finance. Okay. And uh, this is a very good journal. In Mexico, we have a very a strict system for evaluating journals and that is a kind of new in the Mexican experience because before we practically didn't have journals that were uh, refereed but we have now some very good journals and the Mexican Journal of Economics and Finance is one of them. We, we have uh, in our editorial board several Nobel Prize laureates who help us, of course, uh, delineating the policies for our journal and especially at the international global level and the strict requirements for publishing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the presentation here. I will try to see if I can make it. But anyway, uh, the journal uh, publishes four times a, a year. It has set papers in both Spanish and English. And is uh, in the national system is uh, Uh, being uh, ranked as in the what is called the international or yes it is active can you hear me well anyway then uh, is ranked as an international competitive pa uh, paper is uh, indexed like in 12 indexes, including indexes from Latin America and from all around the world, including WOS and including Google, including Escogo, uh, and we have a very good output. We have readers from about 140 countries around the world. And uh, the referring process is very rigorous, and uh, we expect to have uh, always very good uh, journals. In the last few years, we have published some special numbers on special topics, and this year, for instance, we published a special number on COVID issues, the problems that we had, and of course, what it is expected for the future, uh, alternative for recovering from the COVID crisis. And uh, I don't know uh, if you have any uh, other uh, inquiry about the journal, but we have here, we have, I think I have the presentation here from Miriam, which uh, Miriam, Yes, Did doctor, I am, I am sharing the yeah, screen. There it is. Go to the next page. This is the front page of the journal. Please go ahead, journal. Miriam, then it's the referee journal as, as any other one. And you know we uh, publish from all over the world. There's the indexes we have, and we have the rest of the way of science, CLO, the American Economic Association, REPEC, EBESCO, Dialnet and many other journals. A very, very good, very strict journal. Next one. Well, the editorial board. Francisco is a, t a 
teacher researcher in, in the Polytechnic Institute in Mexico, and Gerard was vice president of a private university in Mexico. And here we have several Nobel Prizes in our editorial board. We have Robert Merton, Dr. Marion Scholz, James Haken, we have Aldrich Masichek, and we have Carmen Reicher from the World Bank, who is uh, heading a research uh, uh, desk in Mexico. We have Thomas Copeland and so forth. And here we have some Mexicans like uh, Fausto Hernandez Trilla, Jose Ramirez, Edgar Ortiz, and there were some other pictures, but uh, next one, please. There it is, Francisco Lopez. Well, here we have two articles, the recent articles. Our editor with uh, Robert C. Merton and the articles about the perspectives of financial science. And then we have an article also with our editor, and uh, Aldrich, uh, about Vasicek about the uh, term structure of interest rates. And then we have the special issue on COVID effects, and we have another issue on banking and financial institutions. Next one, please. And I think that is all. I hope you send I, your articles to be published in Mexico. Uh, Mexico, they will be welcome. We're very strict. We have a very a low rate of acceptance, and that's what is uh, becoming a very successful uh, journal. Uh, in Mexico, of course, the things are improving all, all the times. As I said at the first, we didn't have uh, journals that were really strict, but now we have several journals which are also internationally well recognized and the Mexican Journal of uh, Economics and Finance is one of them. And we hope you send your articles there. And there I was uh, my email, which you can use to contact me and to contact the journal. Before I finish, I just see among our friends, our dear friend, Omer Bonitzis, who I haven't seen for many, many years. Yes, so thank Salama. you very much. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay, Professor Jan uh, Malindretos, present your journal, Jan. Okay, thanks. Uh, I am the editor of two journals and I'm the associate editor in a third. Professor Ghosh has mentioned my name that I am on the editorial board with uh, Professor Clark and Professor Ortiz and others, of course. Um, secondly, I have a journal. I just, uh, we just received a journal in the university, the Journal of Business in Developing Nations. This journal has been around 25 years. Um, has gone to about five different institutions, and I'm the one receiving it now. Uh, we hope to um, improve the journal and uh, have it ranked by different um, indexes as well as ABDC. Uh, the only change I'm making is, is um, that we shall call it the Journal of Business in Developing Areas and Nations based on the premise that uh, developing areas have similarities to uh, developed countries, the, the, the underdeveloped areas of developed countries. That's the reason we shall call, we shall make this change. It's a new journal as far as coming to us, has been around 25 years, however. Uh, the next journal is the journal I am sharing with Professor Stamatopoulos and Thalassinos, as a guest editor, the Journal of uh, Risk in Financial Management. And the special issue is Recent Developments in Risk and Financial Management, Economic Methods, Financialization, and Commercialization of Risk. I thank uh, Professor Mirella Cristea since she already presented the journal. 
so I can say much less. Thank you, John. Uh, Professor Bitros, you are in the audience. You want to present the Journal of Economic Asymmetries? George? Okay, I'm not sure if uh, he, he is in. Professor Rivera oh. informed him that he's having trouble joining us. Okay, Professor Ramona Rupei Capoga. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, uh, everybody again. Uh, so I'm, I can say I'm chief editor, but I'm involved in several journals as an editor. And um, Professor Alifter Stalasinos asked me to present uh, one of these journals. So it's an uh, international journal of finance, insurance, and risk management. Uh, currently, this journal is uh, still developing. Uh, it uh, has quite a history, so it started in 2011. But now we know that uh, to attract good papers, you need to be in some databases recognized. And it's uh, very tricky because uh, good papers goes to already recognized journals and it's very difficult to receive good uh, papers uh, when you are not yet in type of science or scopus. And, uh, but uh, this is a preliminary condition um, to get your journal in these uh, databases. So it's a challenge for us, uh, for this journal, um, to attract good papers. Uh, uh, because even PhD students, when I um, promote uh, several journals where I'm editor, but I'm but we are not uh, these journals are not in a, a well recognized um, databases. So it's you can you you can even uh, PhD students uh, uh, to 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 promote for them that uh, you need to be published. But um, I maybe want to share my experience, my last experience uh, when I was uh, guest editor of uh, MDPI journals uh, that are already in uh, Scopus and uh, uh, Web of Science and I was guest editor of the journal of Risk and uh, there was a special issue devoted to fintech and uh, insurtech business models. and. Um, so we promoted it and uh, currently we already published four papers in this uh, special edition and we are waiting uh, for several papers. They're still under process, so we think about six papers will be in this special edition. So this is a possibility and I know that um, they're quite open and they have quite a lot of uh, uh, such special editions offer it and you can also uh, ask uh, for your own if you are interested and uh, they're very active in, in this market. Uh, some people can say that they're quite aggressive. So uh, in our case, uh, when they ask it me to be a guest editor, they also offer it that they can invite uh, five or six uh, good papers and uh, they receive waivers. So the fee in this journal is 1,400. Uh, Swiss francs. It's a uh, quite expensive journal, but uh, as a guest editor, I could invite uh, with waiver. Of course, if uh, uh, you viewers are positive and accept this paper, uh, then the chief editor decides uh, that this paper can be published free of charge. So it's a possibility also um, without uh, payment to be published. Uh, if you know people uh, who organize these special editions, maybe it's uh, worth to contact the guest editor and ask. Uh, maybe they have this possibility to offer waiver. And of course, it was already discussed today. It's very difficult to find reviewers, uh, good reviewers, because it's uh, really time demanding. And uh, um, then you, as a reviewer, you think uh, to spend time to other papers, reviews, and write, or spend this time to write your own papers. It's always a big challenge for journals to find good reviewers. Um, that's all shortly from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Uh, we go to Graziella. Uh, Lefteris, sorry. Oh, you, are, you are there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Don't be there, George. 
Just, just Professor Zerbit. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, I can uh, uh, offer a few. Uh, uh, um, a few uh, pieces of information regarding the Journal of Economic Asymmetries and person, perhaps uh, Thanasis uh, Stengos can add to that. Uh, the Journal of Economic Asymmetries is, is a, an Elsevier uh, journal and we have strict rules in, uh, in the editorial process. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the process of submission and uh, revisions and so forth and so on. The journal has about uh, 25 uh, associate editors, and every associate editor, editor before appointed, uh, has to agree uh, to handle uh, uh, two to four papers every year, which are not desk uh, uh, top uh, reject, desk reject, namely the uh, uh, Professor Malleris, uh, who is the chief editor and um, his associates uh, read first the paper and uh, desk reject uh, everything that is not suitable for the journal and then they allocate the remaining papers to the associate editors and the associate editors are responsible in finding uh, reviewers uh, to uh, uh, to assess the uh, publishability of the of the paper now most of the associate editors are uh, university professors around the world, and um, um, we use our friendships, we use our uh, uh, esteem, our respect, and so forth. Uh, of course, it is a difficult process to uh, uh, to, to obtain uh, uh, very uh, perceptive and uh, very uh, responsive reviewers, but. Uh, uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, the, uh, wh whenever I reject a paper, the, the authors thank me because uh, they see a lot of value in the uh, reviews they get and they revise the paper and they go uh, uh, elsewhere to publish the paper. So uh, uh, we, uh, we know the difficulties. Uh, it, this is a, a no fee, a submission fee journal, and uh, we are getting about... Uh, uh, 600 uh, papers every year. Uh, we cannot publish more than uh, 50 or 60, and you understand that the rejection rate is uh, is one to ten. Uh, so uh, um, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, we are emboldened by the fact that uh, the uh, the journal is uh, the ranking of the journal is uh, is uh, uh, increasing, and uh, we feel from that uh, from these metrics uh, that um, uh, we are doing a good job. Uh, uh, over over time, probably will. Uh, uh, of course, the journal is uh, uh, referenced in uh, in all major uh, databases uh, and. Uh, uh, it's, it's now well established uh, in its particular niche uh, of um, material. Uh, um, so uh, I can uh, answer any any question or any uh, comment I uh, anybody wants to to throw at me. Thank you. Thank you, George. We go around to present all the journals, and then we come to questions, or okay. we may. Uh, set up. A, a I, I I have a, I have a, an obligation. I will come back. Okay, no problem. Okay, okay. Uh, Graziella Nozza. Yes, thank you. Let me share my screen. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Talasinos. I am going to talk about uh, the resources journal and the special issue on bioeconomy, energy, logistics, environmental issues, and sustainable resource management uh, that uh, uh, we are guest editing together with Professor uh, Talasinos and uh, uh, our colleague, Professor Mirella Cristia, that has previously presented the other special issues where, that we are also coordinating. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the, the re journal at large, the, the resources journal, and of course about our special issues and the benefits of publishing in this journal. So the resources journal uh, is covered by M uh, MDPI. It is an international peer review journal 
uh, that covers scientific studies related mainly to resources, as uh, its name. And it's published monthly online by the MDPI. It is an open access, which of course means that it's free for readers, but at the expense of the authors because they pay an article processing charge, uh, either themselves, of course, or their institutions. But uh, for uh, the special issues, and I'm going uh, back to that, if there are articles, good articles that are being invited by the editors, then uh, there, there is a discount, an important discount on the article processing charge, and the process is very well configured. It has the advantage of a high visibility because it is indexed in Scopus, it is indexed in Web of Science as well, other many, many other databases that are well known. It has a very good uh, good rank, or ranking in, uh, of course, well-known uh, citation scores, and uh, it, it goes through a rapid publication process because manuscripts are peer-reviewed and the first decision is provided to authors approximately 17 days after the submission. And we've talked about here uh, uh, in terms of the referees and so on, but the MDPI has a very well-structured uh, program that allows to, to have uh, uh, reviewers in time and the review reports, of course, in time and everything goes smoothly in general. And of course, the reviewers have a recognition. Reviewers who provide timely, uh, uh, thorough peer review reports receive vouchers entitling them to a discount on the article processing charge of their next publication in any MDPI journal in appreciation of the work done and usually this this is very helpful. In terms of our special issue, bioeconomy, energy, logistics, environmental issues and sustainable resource management, uh, we uh, are expecting uh, uh, submissions until next year, 15th of April 2022. I'm going to, to share a bit about the idea behind it. We, we are focused about uh, in terms of natural resources that of, are of course extremely important in a globalized modern economy and even more nowadays in the challenging pandemic and post-pandemic times. So uh, starting with the uh, uh, industrial revolution, the global economy has consistently relied on natural resources, especially fossil fuels for industrial use. And we have uh, focused on other two major problems that have arisen with regards to the use of natural resources, which is the diminish of these resources in na nature, which basically leads to the problem of ensuring their sustainability, but also the contribution of fossil fuel uh, consumption to the increase of CO2 levels in the atmosphere. And we, uh, this special issue, our special issue undertakes several important aspects related to bioeconomy, to energy, logistics, and environmental issues, and ad enhances advanced instruments and methods that are optimal uh, uh, for innovation in the scientific field. So we particularly welcome submissions that configure regional and high quality uh, papers, both theoretical and empirical studies. Uh, manuscripts are also submitted online through the platform that has been previously presented by my colleagues. Uh, for our special issue, as mentioned, the deadline is 15th of April. Uh, in general, there are several guidelines and a template that needs to be followed and everything is well written in, in the package that is related to instruction for authors. Uh, uh, so it is good for uh, uh, the contributors or possible contributors to first check this instruction for authors. Uh, again, uh, there is an article processing charge, but please do contact us. You have our email addresses in the ICABE program uh, because any submission invited by uh, or several submissions that of good papers that are invited by the guest editor do receive an important discount. Thank you very much. And I'm also uh, trying to share the website. I tried to, to paste the link on uh, the chat, but it seems it's not available. This is also the, uh, or I don't know if it shows. We also have the, the um, um, website of the journal uh, as the previously entailed by my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you again very much. Thank you. Thank you, Graciela. Uh, Professor Miltiadis Halikas is in the audience. Miltiadis, are you ready? I am ready. Uh, okay. Thank you, Professor. Uh, it's an honor for me to be in that panel. <clears throat> I am a guest editor uh, of an MDPI journal, uh, uh, which is called the Mathematics. Uh, I will share the screen. Um, mathematics is an 
uh, is a journal with uh, 2.26 um, Tom's or Reuters impact factor. Now I think is clariv called Clarivate uh, impact factor. Um, the special issue entitled Mathematical and Statistical Methods Application in Finance. Um, of course, uh, the policy of uh, MDPI journal is the same here. It, uh, unfortunately, uh, it has fees of uh, 1,600 Swiss francs. And um, a deadline for uh, manuscript uh, submissions is 31 of uh, December. Um, we have already 10, uh, uh, 10 published articles. Um, so um, I think. Uh, uh, I have finished. If there are any questions, I'm available. Okay, thank you. Uh, Professor Luis de Rivera is here. Luis de Rivera. I'm just checking uh, my list here to see if anybody... Okay, Luis de Rivera probably is not here. Professor Stamatopoulos. You want to present the yes, journal? I, yes, I'm here. Thank you. I'm co-editor in the International Journal of Economics and Business Administration, IGEBA. Uh, is an open access uh, refereed publication with focuses um, on economic and business challenges uh, that economic units of various natural face in today's rapidly changing international economic environment. The scope of the IGEBA is to publish original, high quality research work in business economics, business economics uh, having a significant impact to the theory or the practice of business, public organizations, and other institutions. The ultimate mission is to constitute a valuable resource of scientific knowledge and apply research. Uh, results for academics, practitioners, and policy makers. Um, IGEBA uh, is a relative uh, new one uh, journal, uh, was launched uh, in 2013, has been evaluated, uh, however, and indexed in several databases, among them Scopus, RIPEC, SSRN, GEL, Side Factor, and others, and is uh, under evaluation by web, uh, web of Sciences. Uh, of course, uh, we use an online submission platform, and uh, uh, in the very important uh, issue of the, uh, the journal is, of course, the uh, unbiased, double-blind peer review process. Uh, we have uh, also, as uh, previous um, uh, editors have already said uh, the problem with the reviewers. Um, we search, first of all, in the editors and co-editors, the editorial board. Um, and uh, after that, uh, we proceed if the paper is um, uh, not dex desk rejected, uh, we proceed to the review. Um, the review process is uh, between uh, uh, the duration make times make time uh, between uh, one and six months. Uh, this is thank you very much. Thank you thank you, Theodore. Uh, I don't think uh, anybody else is presenting a journal in, in in the audience. So I'm the last one. I'm the third one in the line. I present the European Research Studies Journal. It is a 24-year publication. We started in 1997. We have a Henry board consisting of five members, distinguished 
professors from around the globe. We have seven editors from seven different countries. We represent seven countries as general editors. And we have 55 editorial board members from 36 different countries. We have an online submission platform. We accept more than 300 submissions per month. We have a first screen, an automatic screen on this platform regarding plagiarism and keynote words. When the, the, the article, the submission goes through these two screens, it comes for further evaluation. We have double blind reviews for all articles submitted. So we send the articles to reviewers. We take back their reports. They either reject, accept, or go for modifications, for revisions. And for revisions, there are two stages actually, or two, two, two levels, minor revisions or major revisions. The evaluation process takes up to six months, from one to six months. One month is for the high quality articles, with no major revisions, with a double positive review from the reviewers. If we have minor reviews, uh, revisions, we may spend three or four months before publication. It is indexed in many databases. In 2017, we were number one in the list of Scopus based on site score index. We are in front of big names in academia. Probably it was a mistake because since then we have a lot of fights, but anyhow, we, we manage it. We have something I didn't hear from anyone. We offer free publications, 10% in each issue is for free. And it is offered to researchers from low-income countries. And it is part of our social, corporate social responsibility. The journal is published by ISMA. ISMA is the International Strategic Management Association. Uh, it's a non-profit, non-governmental association. So through ISMA, we offer scholarships to young researchers, besides what I said. As I announced today, we offer 1,000 euros to the best article presented. We offer six free publications. And we organize workshops and special meetings on issues related to publication techniques and tips. I have been in Indonesia four times, in Malaysia, and other less developed economies, organizing workshops just to show the people how to write a good paper. And of course, we don't charge anything for that. So we invite people if they want to work with us to submit their manuscript, it goes for evaluation immediately. We reply to every one email within 48 hours. Within 48 hours, you receive a reply. No matter what the issue is, even if you are asking a silly question, we answer it. Okay. So this is the journal I represent. 
Now, if we don't have any other uh, colleague to present any journal, I will uh, open the discussion with this. You mentioned some uh, uh, international publishers or maybe uh, some databases like Scopus or Web of Sciences or DOAS or uh, uh, Campbell or whatever. I want to ask you, do you feel that the evaluation from these organizations is objective or they look for and they keep their own benefit? They push their journals and I don't know if you are familiar with a big scandal in publications raising uh, last summer. What was the scandal? The scandal was that they prove that some journals have been pushed strongly and some publications they have been pushed strongly with the manage of certain publishing houses. Among them, there were nine journals from Elsevier, seven journals from Francis and Taylor, five journals from Emerald. And it was a big scandal. And what was the consequence of this scandal? I don't know if you are familiar with the way they evaluate journals regarding the citation index. The citation index actually is a rate of how many citations in this year divided by total number of publications in the last three years. Because of this scandal, they changed this rate of evaluation and they change it in a very easy way. Actually, they increase the denominator from three years to four years. You know why? Because with that, in four years, for a new journal, okay, and a journal not supported by a big publishing house, it is very difficult to be on the top and have many citations year after year. You may have many citations in one year because you had very good publications, but the next year you don't have such good. So they change this and now they calculate uh, the, this rate on a different way. And one more thing, one more issue I want to raise. You are also familiar with the uh, Web of Sciences. You know that Web of Sciences has take out everything from the list and now they reevaluate all the journals based on a new system established and designed by Clarivate. So if you visit the website of Clarivate, they will ask you to propose the journal. And the first screen on this evaluation is to see if the code of ethics or the terms and conditions or uh, your business model or, or, or is based and described in a certain way. They ask to upload even an application related to people who are not able to write and sign a document. So you have to have a, a certain document signed by a representative of this author in order to get, you know, a, a positive uh, evaluation, a positive review from them. So they reject most of the journals and uh, they intend and they instruct them to follow a certain way 
on code of ethics and uh, code of uh, publication and terms and conditions and uh, uh, confidentiality and stuff like that. And then it goes to the second screen and uh, they just check the rejection rate. They don't accept. And if you don't have uh, evidence that your journal is uh, uh, rejecting a certain percentage of uh, submissions, it is not going through. So they ask you to decrease the rate of acceptance or they ask you to decrease the number of published articles. And then you resubmit it and it goes to the next stage and they check for the quality of the articles. I don't think this is the right way and I'm sure that it is because of the scandal I just mentioned. So be careful when you submit your journal for evaluation in one of those uh, of those databases. Uh, make sure that you follow strictly the instructions given by them. You're not allowed to have your own strategy. You're not allowed to have your own policy. So, discussion open. So it is about the totalitarianism. S say it again. So it is about a totalitarianism. Yes, it is. It is. And the reason, the reason behind this is this. If you check the statistics, you see a great decrease of submissions to those databases from university libraries. I know in uh, in USA there is a 30% decrease on submissions from university libraries. You know, the one for example, as an example, when El Sever goes to Harvard and say, okay, we are Scopus, who, as Elsevier, I represent Scopus. I have three, four thousand titles under Scopus. So I give you the permission to use all the journals, free of charge for the journals, to your faculty members and to your students to read any article anytime, many times. Okay. And they make a contract and they get maybe more than 50 to $100,000 a year. They have a 30% decrease on these submissions only from the United States. So they have lose money. So what they try to do, they try to manage the market because it's a market and get more submissions and publications for themselves. And I'm talking especially for uh, Scopus. I have some, some data for, for, for this database. So this is how the game is going on now. So comments, please. Yes, yes, Gors, Mr. Gors. I am very glad that you bring uh, to our discussion these issues. It's very important, and I know that it has met, misled many universities in the tenure process. Many young people, especially, don't get the tenure because of all the standards set by JCR and all those other indexes that you mentioned. Like an anecdote, let me tell the Mexican experience. In Mexico, we have a national research system, which is part of the National 
Research and Technology Council in the national in the uh, national research system. Uh, to be a member, you have to be productive and publish internationally in very good journals, be a good teacher, a tutor thesis, and so forth. But about publishing, right now what they're doing is, if you don't publish in some journal that is JCR, Scopus, or something like that, they don't validate the publication. They don't even look, because there is some committees. They don't even look at the quality of the of the uh, uh, paper, and of course, for that reason, I am uh, against that kind of process because uh, not necessarily all journals that are in the JCR are good journals. And what you mentioned, for instance, uh, the problem we had last summer, many of those are journals and those big index indexes. And uh, also, like you mentioned, they are directing many of their policies to oriented by the market. And in that way, what I've been saying to my students here is all journals right now, except a few, for instance, that here we even mentioned, they don't charge fees for submissions, but all journals exaggerating a bit, just for the discussion, they're predatory. I saw a journal that asked 6,000 euros for publishing once the paper is accepted. That's more than one, what I earn a month at my university. And we cannot publish in that kind of journal because I don't have that kind of money. Um, and I don't have too many pressures economic, uh, economic. but all the teachers have children, they have, uh, like uh, Ephraim, they have dogs, they have all kinds of pets and so forth. I have no money to submit to journals that ask for $6,000, 6,000 euros for publishing a paper. And we don't publish, if I don't publish in that kind of journal, they don't validate my investigation. I don't get to be a member of the national research system, which is necessary for those reasons. It's prestige, and the other reason is a monetary uh, a scholarship, you can say, monthly, which is an addition to the salary you get from your university. It's not from the university, it's from that system. But we seek that extra income because the income in the universities is very low. And years ago, people used to work in two or three places, supposedly full time, to get some uh, uh, income. And that's one reason was established the national research system, so that people would be full time at their own universities and have some allowance extra from the national system of research. But their criteria, they're kind of crazy. They have improved research in Mexico. They have, we didn't have journals that were rigorous, like I mentioned, for instance, uh, some years ago. Now, very, very rigorous. I presented the Mexican Journal of, of uh, uh, Economics and Finance. You saw that this Rigor, we have double blind, referring, double, double blind, accept papers in very low rates and so forth. It's an international journal. It has the characteristics, it follows the standards of international journals. But even that is restricting the research in Mexico, because then the financial community in Mexico City for research is very small. How many people from Mexico are participating at the international congresses? And how many people publishes from Mexico? In that way, 
uh, for that one, that's one of the reasons people like Dilip Efrain, uh, John Malindret, and so forth, they know me because I've been working very hard in Mexico promoting research, financial economic research, and publishing. So that's one thing I want to, to mention, to discuss. Like I said, exaggerating a little bit, all journals are predatory. And some of the predatory journals are very good. I published without realizing in one of them, because the name was very close to a, a good journal. But anyway, I have many citations from that predatory journal from the balls list. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Now, one other issue that I want to bring up is an idea that I have. One thing that we look for in these conferences and we have looked out throughout the years is cooperation, collaboration among ourselves with authors from other countries and so forth. One idea from this session is that we perhaps will have special issues of two journals, like one, let's say like your, your journal and my journal as a special issue, double sponsored by both journals. And uh, that would be a kind of idea that perhaps we can work to, for the best of research, not only in your journal and my journal and in your country, but all around the world. So that is an idea. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Professor Gos and then uh, Professor Takmazidis. Professor Gos. Yes, thank you. I want to get back to you. I was looking at my uh, journal, the International Journal of Finance, and I found that 28 uh, members in the editorial board, and of them I counted 23 are or have been the main editor-in-chief of many of these journals and or associate editors. So that's one I wanted to bring out and Edgar raised an issue and I don't know whether you can read it in the highlighted. If it is not, I will write. It's William Sharp. I proceeded to write the results under the title Capital Asset Prices, a Theory of Market Equilibrium and Condition of Risk, which won the Nobel Prize in 1990, which was actually uh, grounded in a footnote of Markovich, Harry Markovich. But that paper, he said, uh, it was uh, rejected by a referee and a change in the editorship of the journal for two years. Then it got published. That's I'm reading from the book and it is called Lights of Nobel of Laureates, 13 Nobel Prize winner, MIT Press. I'm giving you the citation, how it happens with the big stars, so-called big stars. Uh, I will read in my other session Markovich's statements and uh, Milton Friedman's statement. I have noted uh, the uh, paper I'm going to present next is Markovich's Efficient Frontier Everybody Knows. But how many? I did a survey of 500 folks in our profession, and almost nobody knew that there is Andrew Roy who published the same idea, same paper in a better journal, Econometrica, a uh, much, much better journal than Journal of Finance. I asked Harry Markovich, I said, Harry, why did you publish in a six-year-old journal? And he said, well, at that time, whoever would publish, I would be happy for that. That's what is, uh, he published. And uh, I had a paper which was published in the European Journal of Finance 
under the editorship of uh, Ephraim Clark and another member, but it was posted by Martin Mailer, the Nobel laureate. It's, it's a good paper, you must. Uh, I said, it's too complicated. We cannot publish it. Journal editor, Journal of Finance. So these things go on. And um, the chair of this session mentioned he went to Malaysia uh, and Indonesia. I have been in 67 countries and I held Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange Endowed Chair Professorship. And I did a, an international conference where Edgar was, uh, I don't know whether Edgar was there, uh, Ephraim Clark was there, and I introduced there the Editors Forum first. John Malinditas probably was there. And I was in the, this is the um, uh, poster pasted all over the uh, Sofia, Bulgaria. I am the Hellenic Bank Association endowed chair professor. And I did a conference in Crete. Edgar was there, I think. Ephraim was there. John Malindritas was basically helping me out. Then I did a conference with um, uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. The, I have a picture with the Prime Minister and Harry Markovich, who was the keynote speaker. So I tried to bring the big stars. In my journal, I found that always there is a Nobel laureate. So quality control is there, but bias you cannot delete completely, Edgar. It is there, international. Edgar and I wrote probably two books, uh, Macmillan and uh, what was the other? Uh, I, I don't remember, maybe Elsevier or something. I have uh, 19 books to my credit and countless paper I have done. Um, the Journal of uh, Economic Asymmetries. I have a paper two, three years ago. It's a very technical paper. It's called Growth uh, um, 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 Allocation, and uh, Resource Allocation and Welfare. That paper I published in a model of trade with non-traded goods, that's asymmetry there, not the Stolper samples, that's not the hexarolin framework, it just extended that. It was, I thank uh, the editor here is there. So we do that. A part of the reason I will mention in my other session, papers are badly written, that's one. Secondly, you are unknown, so, hey, it could not be good. I wouldn't read it. That's the second reason. Third reason is the spite, spite effect that uh, somebody uh, who knows me will uh, hate me to the extent my paper would not be. How do I know? I sent a paper in journal, uh, financial management and somebody from Washington State called me and said, hey, Philip, I'm uh, reviewing your paper, writing the report. I said, how did you know it's my paper? He said, I know. How do they know? Because before he submits the paper, it goes in private circulation. And so everybody knows. The young folks who don't know how to publish, the secret of publishing, I will. Uh, um, I have put uh, a note, it's called collaboration on research, writing, and editing. I will be discussing, everybody has a copy of that, at least in my session. John Malinditas told me, he has put also, you can read it and you, it's an eye-opener, uh, basically. Um, it was uh, published by um, um, Zenberg, Michael Zenberg, who has a book, well, many books. One is Samuelsonian Economics. And he is the um, editor of that book. So it is uh, that kind of situation Edgar was telling. Fee is one. 
and you are unknown, so who cares about you? It's a quarterly rule. It's a cliquish um, uh, rule that dominates the system. It's not we idealize on this discussion. I'm the oldest. I am running 33, going to 34 years as editor. And I founded another journal, uh, founding editor, International Journal of uh, Banking and Finance. I was, uh, I held conference in Kuala Lumpur, Crete, Greece. And this is, this, uh, I am the endowed chair, uh, professor of Hellenic Bank Association, which is the Greek. This is mainly a Greek conference. And I was there and I was uh, uh, director of a stock exchange. Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, and a distinguished professor there too. John was there. I brought a uh, conference. I brought many folks like Ephraim Clark, Edgar Ortiz, and um, six other members. I paid the fees for them, for their stay, their flight, and honorarium. I gave them. I means the conference produced that. So it is, we, some of us pay attention to what is happening. The young folks are, yes, they are being butchered on a regular scale. But we have to change the tenure process and review process. And it should not be just the journal name that should be considered. Editorship is a very important role and I will mention many other high pro uh, profile professors articles were rejected in the first blush. So you can complain but it is not uh, the end of it, end of the rope. So you have to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, move on to Professor uh, Dr. Takmazidis, please. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, although I'm not an editor, but uh, thanks for the permission just to, to, to maybe suggest something. We all understand the issue of publication is crucial where science goes. So I was wondering and ask all these experts that you have in the panel, we have in the panel, is there a need for, a, a regu for regulation? Uh, if that was the case, should be uh, regulated by independent authorities? But then what about sensitive issues such as censorship or even promotion of ideas? So, or maybe it could be a regulator or global regulator. And, and, a, and another maybe suggestion, if you think that is important because the funding is allocated more or less and is very much associated with uh, publication, do you think that eliminating publication from the world ranking that actually happened or for where funds are allocated? Would it help? Would it be helpful or not to resolve any issue that may, may exist? Thank you very much for this. Who wants to answer it? done without submission when it is accepted charge the uh, fee that's one way to solve uh, or eliminate uh, much of the problem and secondly independent global it is not but review reviewers are chosen by the editors based on the paper I did first three, four pages, I figure out who would be the editor. And um, so that way it's a, a, a global reach. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be in the US. It could be anywhere. I have had that. That's why I know Edgar, I know uh, Ephraim Clark who lives in Paris and, and uh, uh, Spain and sometimes comes to England, uh, to the US where he was born in. 
So we we reach, and uh, many others who are not. I, I'm not mentioning their names because it's um, uh, it would not ring a bell. These people are here, so I'm mentioning that. Edgar and I did books. Um, um, uh, Ephraim Clark and I did books, and that book is. Uh, uh, everywhere in the financial markets, arbitrage, hazing, and speculation. I know a uh, few of the major um, financial firms, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, using this formula that we have created there. So it is, we do our best. We have been blessed by being who uh, uh, we have been. We take our responsibility, but there are uh, rotten eggs. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, I want to say something, uh, Left yes. Daddy. Uh, yes. Um, regulation is tough in terms of academic scholarship. Academic scholarship follows more of a market approach. The market being the recognition of good quality and bad quality and uh, middle middle uh, ranking quality. So it's a little difficult to regulate this process, but um, it becomes, uh, the market does work to a great extent. We know that the market has many failures, but in this context, the market works rather well. Let me mention a couple of things. We emphasized how difficult it can be to publish in top journals. And it was not so explicit, but it was implicit that there may be the old boy network and they keep others out who are not well known. And that's true, by the way. And Professor Ghosh mentioned Markowitz. He was unknown. He published in a second-rate journal at that time. Now it's the number one journal in finance. But in 46, when it started, he published in 52, it was really a second-rate journal. And now it's number one. The market works in the following sense, uh, Professor Takmazidis. Not only there is a supply and demand, the journal editors may limit a few researchers. But you see, because there is competition, a wonderful thing, these researchers could submit to outlets which not, may not be as famous, but they do publish. And because there is open access, so to say, that we can read those journals, we start citing them. Citations are a wonderful approach to democracy in publications. Because you see, here is the example. Markowitz was one of the reasons that Journal of Finance is number one now. Why? He published his paper, and every individual, every researcher was citing Harry Markowitz's better paper. They brought it up. I'll give you another example, less well known. Uh, Johansson, the famous fellow who did the cointegration approach. He improved on the cointegration approach of uh, Granger and Engel. Johansson published his monumental piece, I think it was uh, 97, 98, please correct me if I'm wrong, in a journal that was second rate at that time. It was not an A journal, it was a B journal, the Oxford Bulletin for Economic Research. Nowadays, Oh, to Johansson, because every individual who does econometrics in the last 15, 20 years has been citing Johansson. They moved up that journal up. That's the beauty of things. These citations enables us to fight totalitarianism. So good quality work, someone who has good quality work, he or she will be recognized eventually through citations. A good friend of mine uh, is professor at NYU, told me that at NYU, they have made it the case recently in the last seven, eight, nine years. A policy. They don't care what quality journals you publish in. 
the individual uh, the, the, the individual asking for promotion. They will not make somebody a full professor uh, unless he has or she has 250 citations. They will not, under any circumstances, even if they have American Economic Review or which the best journal of all in the field of finance, Quarterly Journal of Economics. They don't care how many publications one has in the Quarterly Journal of Economics, the most influential journal out there in these fields. That person, that candidate, must have 250 publications. Unless, otherwise, forget it about becoming a full professor. Thank, thank you, John. Yes, yes. Uh, can I can I add yes. something to this very well uh, taken review and assessment of the citations index? In in our department, in the economics department, when I was chairman, we applied the the indices of uh, not only of uh, citations, but also by the quality of citations, who cited somebody. If the citation was by a well-known uh, author, uh, this guaranteed that the citations will multiply in the future. So, uh, yes, I uh, agree with this assessment that it, it is not so much the number of publications and the standing uh, in earlier uh, years, namely in the uh, in the 80s and 90s, we had divided the journals into the so-called diamond list journals, where we had included about uh, 15 journals, and uh, the non-diamond list uh, journals, and we rated the, the uh, publications in the one uh, group differently with the others. But citations always is a very uh, important criterion because it projects the value and the future of the ideas included, propagated through a paper. So, yes, I agree with this, with this assessment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bitrus. Uh, anybody else wants to make a comment? May may I add something? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, and then, and then uh, Professor Gunopoulos. Just one minute. Uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Bitrus, uh, Professor uh, Malindretus, please can you tell me how I can uh, get uh, good citations uh, if I cannot uh, publish in uh, first quality journals. Uh, I mean, the, the, the system, uh, Scopus, uh, Web of Science, uh, and all these databases. Thank you. Uh, Lefteri, shall I ask? Uh, yes. Shall I yes. Say yes, when, yes. I write, yes. when I write a paper, I, uh, I put in the Google, not the, na the name of everybody, anybody. I put an idea and I search for those who contributed to this idea. So I don't care if, if the idea comes through the Quarterly Journal of Economics or the American Economic Review or, or what, an international uh, second-rated journal. Uh, what counts is what you contribute in the advancement of ideas, in the, in, in the modeling and in the, in, in the estimation, if, if it is an econometric paper. Uh, of course, we have a bias, uh, Thodore. We have a bias to always go to to believe that anything published in in these uh, first-rate uh, uh, journals is, is worthy. But I tell you this: you remember in the 60s and in the 70s this this fad with the turnpike uh, theorems of uh, economic uh, economic development. Turnpike the uh, growth theory, all these fads they, they disappeared. You don't hear anymore about turnpike theorem because at the time 
the, the profession was under the heavy influence of Samuelson and the others and uh, um, the, the other big fellows who had come into economics, not from economics, but either from physics or mathematics. Arrow was such a fellow. They came into economics from other fields and uh, uh, you remember uh, 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 once upon a time the, the, the control theory by Podriangin, I, I got this sickness myself. I have published two, three uh, papers using control theory. But uh, do you, my, my papers in which I put a lot of effort and a lot of time have less citations than easier and more productive and more creative papers that don't have any method, any any mathematics at all. So and, uh, and the the and the you know I participate in many electoral bodies and you know my colleagues uh, everywhere they they count numbers of publications numbers of citations they don't see the paper at all. They, they they evaluate a professor to be pro I, I agree totally with uh, professor Malindretos for for the citations uh, to, to be uh, the number of citations to be uh, someone uh, professor but uh, at the end they they should look at the paper uh, itself they of didn't course. do it of course, of course, I agree. Of course. this is the case uh, for Greece the law uh, says number of publications, no matter where this publication is. So we don't have a list of journals evaluated by a certain committee, a national research committee or something. So anything published is counted as a publication. But let's uh, give the, the floor to the Professor Gunopoulos. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Thalassinos. Let me share the British experience. Uh, I work in the United Kingdom for all, for more than 20 years, huh? and uh, I can say the following. Uh, over the years, the competition has increased dramatically. I know that I don't say any new to you. Uh, the United Kingdom is using a list called ABS. Huh? They have ranked the journals from uh, ABS 4 star, as it's, co it's called ABS, to ABS 1. Uh, in our days, we live in an era where in uh, certain universities, especially the what we call the good ones, uh, if you publish, let's say, uh, so there is uh, one, two, three, four, and four stars, the higher we go up, the less the number of journals we find and we meet there. So we live in an era, for example, that I would say you a personal experience. I met my associate dean of research uh, two years ago. Uh, we cross over and uh, he asked me, oh, hello, Dimitrios, uh, what was your last publication, etc. I said to him, uh, a specific journal, which was an ABS3. And uh, what the guy said to me straightforward is, uh, Dimitrios, my condolences. And I said to him, why do you share my, your condolences to me? Because ABS3 does not count for our department. We want only four and four stars. So you just uh, spared your time, so it is not of any use to us. So we live in that era that uh, the schools, especially in the United Kingdom, press us to publish in uh, the journals with the very highest level of competition. And this is the only ones that they recognize. Anything apart of those, they, th they think that this is a, a spare amount of time that you that we just point. This is what I wanted to share. Uh, well, let me, uh, let me uh, express my, my experience on this list. A, B, D, C. Uh, we decide to apply to A, B, D, C. And what do we get back? Do you have an editor from Australia or New Zealand? We said, no, you cannot apply to this database. You know that, Dimitris. And I'm, I'm looking to find a back. guy. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to find a guy from Australia or New Zealand. So, uh, databases are, uh, have been invented in certain places or regions or by certain publishers. And they take advantage 
of getting many journals and then sell what they have. So for ABDC, I know that, as Dimitri said, in UK, it's impossible to get uh, a point if you don't have a publication in star three, star, star four, three, one, or what. In this database only. Why this database is the best in the world? Why? Who is also, behind? Let's see. Let's see who is behind this database. It's an individual organization in Australia. Lafteri, the reason is uh, it's an old boy network. In this case, the old, uh, and I mean that seriously, excluding women often, <laughs> the old boy network, unfortunately. Okay. And in this case, the old boy network is the Australian New Zealand old boy network. And we are going to promote ourselves now and be the great, you know, whatever. Um, it, it is sad, just so you know, ABDC is not followed by everybody, but it is the most followed list right now in the United States. Number one, by a wide margin. But we all who use it know its problems. What you are saying, you know, now, Lefteri. In fact, I'll give you an, an example of this. There is a journal in which I have published. Um, it's not a high-ranking journal. And the truth is, it should not be a high-ranking journal. Yes, I'm telling you, I published work that was not that fantastic. I'm acknowledging it. This journal probably is a C. I don't know what happened, but it has an attractive name. I won't mention the journal. It has an attractive name. I know the fellow who is the editor now. And that journal, ABDC, has ranked A now, top journal. He told me that where they didn't receive any submissions, this year alone, they received 200 submissions, which is a lot for that journal. And I'm sure this, uh, this past year, this year they will get more. This is what goes on. To answer specifically your point, Lefteri, they like the name. It has a very nice name, a very catchy name. They like the name. The authorities, in quotes, in Australia and New Zealand decided they will make it an A. They made it an A, and now it's becoming a much more important journal. Yes, uh, let me let me say another another uh, experience I have. You all know the bills list. You know the bills list. Someone having the name Bill create a list, and he has a number of journals in his list. So this list is accepted in Asia and uh, some places other places in the world. Who is this guy? Nobody goes, knows. It's an individual. So look behind the databases and those organizations which are responsible for evaluating journals. If we look on some of them, Please. especially those belonging to big publishing houses, Check the editors of these journals and get in contact with them and ask them, do they have any real power to decide which article is going to be published? Just for curiosity. I have a friend from Aristot Aristotle University in Thessaloniki. I asked him, hey, you are editor in this journal. Will you please help to, to, to find a way to publish uh, some articles from my, my colleagues? He said, I have no power at all. They put my name and they never asked me. Check, check the editors. Take the best journal in the world and check the editors. Ask them if they have any power. And I know another, another issue, another, another case in, in, uh, in Europe, in uh, the Netherlands friend of mine. He is general editor of one journal. I call him. I say, hey, 
what's going on with Egypt? I have nothing to do with that. They just put my name there. I will raise. Uh, Who is doing me. the evaluation? Kathy, Susan, girls and boys outsourcing workers in Indonesia and Malaysia. And they take instructions and they say, okay, check this, check this, this, and they paid by peace. This is Dimitri, the, the real, the real life behind this big market, publishing, you know, market. And Lefteris, may, may I make a, one or two comments, please? Yes, of course. Well, I do not know the literature in, in your fields, in most of your fields, in uh, finance. I am uh, foreign to, to this literature. Uh, but in, in my areas of uh, knowledge, I have seen the literature and I, I see from time to time a lot of colleagues uh, putting a lot of time to assess the value of the journals and publish assessment reports about the journals uh, and uh, trying to produce indices of quality. And the indices of quality are uh, structured by going, uh, uh, giving weight to the number of citations, to the quality of citations, uh, to the uh, time horizon of citations, because if uh, an article is cited, uh, let's say, in the first two, three years of its publication, and then it's forgotten, um, it's not that good in terms of quality uh, compared to a, to a paper which survives over decades. And the, the citations are, are repeated and you see they, uh, they become a fertile uh, a fertilizer for further um, ideas. So at least in economics, we have frequently many assessment papers published about the journals. And the editors are very mindful of these assessment reports because if they, uh, the, the journals take the, uh, the downhill, uh, they are ousted and other editors are coming up. So there is even a competition among the editors. Uh, I, I would... I don't know how the situation has uh, developed in, in, in finance or uh, in, other, uh, in other fields, but in economics, uh, the literature itself has become the filter of showing us which journals are, should be at the top and sh which journals should come uh, lower. In, Thank you. Uh, in general, of course, there are very good journals, there are very good editors, and they, they do quite good work. But uh, in general, if we take, let's say, uh, the middle level of all journals around the world, you see the problem I just described. One more uh, intervention by uh, Pellegrino, and then we close because it's 6.30 yes. and we start in yes, 15 my, minutes. My question, yes. gentlemen, greetings. Hello. My question is, in the last uh, dozen years or so, it seems that demand for publication has increased. Throughout the world, more universities, more, uh, there's, so there's increasing demand. Uh, what about the supply of journals in terms of quantity, quality? Has that increased, say the same? What has happened? You are a gentleman in the field of uh, editing. It has been increased. Tremendously. It has been increasing. Yes. Do you think the, the quality, yes. the quality yes, 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 yes. and the quantity new, also has increased? Yes, tremendously. New, new publishing houses are coming, especially from developing economies right now, India, China, and they are very uh, aggressive in this market.
uh, I know I know uh, an issue. They they create a, a kind of uh, a that they. they Frozen. Okay. Yes, you have frozen. I love Teddy. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the. Uh, the wait, the, wait. I call him. Wait, please wait. Uh, the problems of, of digitization. Since he has frozen, let's just, um, okay. I'll make one comment. Or go ahead, Professor Bitros, so we, because time yeah. is of the essence. Yeah, uh, we have to meet. Okay. John, I, I, I think uh, I have finished. Uh, uh, I have had my problems with major journals. and uh, uh, But I think I agree with your assessment of the, of the technology. The technology, because it is based on competition and... Uh, uh, the variation of editors. Uh, editors don't stay very, uh, very long in, in the editing uh, process because of the variation. Uh, I think on the whole, the process uh, works very uh, efficiently. Thank you. Professor Ghosh? Just one minute. Um, I know Robert Papp, who has been the longest editor of the ABDC. He was a good friend. I gave a seminar in his uh, Melbourne Institute of Technology in <coughs> Melbourne, Australia. Now he's in Queensland. I asked him, how do you decide A, B, C, D? He said, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's my name. So that's of some of the issues that you are raising. Nobody knows how it is. And Robert Papp is a good, good old friend of mine. I said I have been in many countries. I met many people. And almost all the editors, uh, um, uh, journals, I have served as reviewers. I know most of them personally. So it's a mystery. It's a Thank mystery. you, Professor Ghosh. Uh, folks, we are about five minutes late. So I will stop here because a few of us may want to join the next sessions. Uh, thank you all very much for your participation. You made it worthwhile and I learned a lot of things and I hope that it was a productive meeting. And let's continue with the conference and hear new things because I keep learning.